Hello and welcome back. In this short lecture, we're going to learn about blob storage. Blob stands for binary launch object. That's a full form of the blob. Let's try to understand more about the blob storage and uh, whatever you try to save the blob uh, within the blob storage. Uh, that can be a streaming files, so video files, or text files, or maybe some kind of semi structured data or unstructured data or large files that's gonna uh, read and write uh, that can be you no know, you can store into a blob storage so it is purely based on the object oriented and this storage is built for a scaling of uh, greater performance at the same time greater scalability when i say about the scalability you can store uh, uh, petabytes of data worth and also you can get the output of the data transfer in the gbps that's see gigabytes of data can be you know, transferred within the uh, within the storage account so it's a great massive scale storage that you are getting with uh, microsoft and this is actually designed in a modern uh, consideration for the cloud so it's a cloud ready so when you are uh, developed any of the application based on the rest or http access or if that needs to be authenticated with the modern cloud or modern cloud applications fully supported for your storage account because the storage account is fully designed with the rest and http access supported and the blob storage is uh, you can basically store all these uh, objects which are larger files or images or video files or virtual machine disks files can be stored within the blob storage when we look at the structure uh, from the microsoft azure portal side of the objects how it looks like from the uh, portal let's say you have a resource group that's where you have created a storage account here so this storage account is inside your resource group and within this storage account you're going to actually create a container and these containers will have the objects so that's what we're going to actually try let's say in other way like whatever you're trying to store inside the blob that actually goes to a container within this container you will have the objects when i say object actually uh, because it is actually storing in the object format but uh, here you can consider as your video files or your semi um, semi unstructured files or, just, or or unstructured files completely like music files videos text files log files or vhds disk files all that can be stored and that can be considered as a object and that can be stored inside the container now have a look on the type of the blob storage so for a greater performance uh, you can choose the type of the blob storage and for example the first one would be the, there are three types actually and if you look at the first one would be the block uh, blob uh, which is nothing but the common type of the blob that you use it so when it's a common uh, the common things like your streaming contained or video files or images like your photos and text files all that can be stored as a general in general and if you are looking for a appending operation uh, in that situation you can actually go for a blob type when you're creating you can use the append blob so append blob is basically useful in terms of uh, a continuous uh, logging is happening to a single file or some files so keep on writing the operations in that situation you can actually use the append blob so that you get the greater performance greater scalability and also uh, there's a page blob page blob is basically if you are uh, looking for a read and uh, write operation should happen and it randomly for a greater performance then you would be choosing a uh, page blob so a typical example for this would be a virtual machine disks let's say you have attached one of the additional disks that can be actually configured from a page blob so these are the blobs that we can talk and let's jump into the azure portal to have a look on how to create so when you try to create storage account you have uh, for example if i just go and run the storage account creation process and you see here account kind uh, here uh, once i choose here i have an option here for the blob storage so i i can go ahead and create a dedicated blob storage account 
altogether or i can actually go and use my existing storage account in this case uh, because this has even the containers uh, which is nothing but the blob services within this so you can go ahead and use the service so if i just explicitly choose by creating the wizard for the blob or based storage account that is fully dedicated uh, for only blob and it doesn't contain anything called files file sheets or table or queues so it's purely dedicated for blob services so let's jump into uh, creating that specific account type from the storage account so i'll just click on add so i can choose here my research group and give a random name of your storage account so demo this is for the blob uh, demo one two three or something like that and choosing the uh, configuration here as only account type is completely blob so now i have even though i have chosen the blob type i have here the option for lrs grs and read access grs so i can choose the type of the blob type so i can choose here i'm just going with the lrs at this point of time later point if i want i can change it even so i'm just going to the networking so i do have here the same type like i can choose i can enable this blob for my all networks which is including the internet and intranet and if i choose only public with only selected ip address i can give here or with a specific vnet um, i can configure here or just to the private endpoint so we did talked about all these types so i'm just going at this point of time with the public endpoint for all networks and then i'm going for the data protection again for the data protection for the recovery and tracking we did talk about this uh, when we are trying to create the standard storage account so this is as simple as that for the soft delete so how many days it should be you know store the uh, data once you delete it from your blobs so that's the option which you can set it if you want to you know, configure and turn on point in time these two containers so if you choose that uh, you can choose the number of days it's gonna uh, uh, stay for a point in time restore to restore one or more of your containers uh, before uh, it's actually deletes so these are the things and uh, these two are tracking information so that would uh, actually changed within the versioning uh, within the version of that blob you can configure with the tracking and coming back to the advanced so i'm gonna select as a normal things here i can choose i can choose even uh, hot or cool specific data tire here and the idea of the tire mentioning here would be within this blob if you are frequently accessing you should be you not know, choosing as a hot like you know read and uh, write access is very frequent then it's better to you know choose as a hot but if it is you know very rarely you are using the files from this blob then use as a cool access and later point even you are trying to only access those uh, files maybe log files all those things uh, maybe a periodic time let's say one year after one year or six months then you can actually make that into archive i'm going to show you that within this demo also uh, which we can change it and the blob uh, is accessible publicly you can configure public or disable all these options and now tags are very important in terms of the billing and managing and to find out you know who's responsible for the storage account we can give that details and click on review and create so that's going to create a storage account for us uh, which is a kind of account would be blob storage if the blob account has been created for us we'll just go to the resource this is very similar and even the type is a storage account so here if you see here the difference is you have only container you don't have here files and sheets or queues tables all that are not available just the container so uh, you can design your containers up here so within this you can create your own container if you see here dot locks are there dot uh, blob change feeds or that so i can straightforward go ahead and create here a blob type let's say i want this for my demo so what would happen is this is becomes as a 
a folder so it's not really a true folder this is a kind of a folder but we can't say this is a true folder even though it was showing here um, as a folder it's not a real true folder and coming back to the axis so when you try to um, create anything you can actually change the axis level uh, by default it has created with a private no anonymous access that means nobody can access until unless you have access keys here uh, which contains uh, with respect to this and you can create here the policies uh, with respect to the access and in, in our case actually you can uh, choose even the blob with anonymous read access that means you are actually giving access for this entire blob anonymously and when you choose the third option which is a container you can read and write within the storage account all the blobs can be listed so that means you're actually giving more control so it all depends on you know what permissions you need to define but security is a key thing that we need to always consider and uh, uh, we don't want to give just like you know anonymous access to be you know, granted so we know that you know uh, to which account or which access is really needed for what network types and we can configure those firewalls all that you know which we discussed in the previous lectures for now so we know uh, this is what the uh, storage account creation for the blob and we can set the access level for your blobs and even we can upload the files directly from here let's say I want to just upload a text file in this case upload so this file has been uploaded and if you remember the type of this storage account with a blob is configured as with respect to the tire as hot so whatever you're trying to upload whatever the data you're working it is considered as hot that means you are frequently accessing the data so based on that it has been designed let's say I have just created a container and I wanted to make this file to be uh, frequently changed so I just wanted to you know, change this to something else uh, I mean basically I wanted to change for change the tide to be uh, I can go ahead and configure as a cool uh, because it has in inherited as a hot earlier I can change this as uh, cool that means it is uh, very rarely accessed and if you have a file that has been you know backed up and you don't want to you know or reuse those files definitely so in that situation you can actually configure as the archive so that it will be very rarely accessed and it takes some time to uh, actually unzip and uh, show you it takes some time when you move into archive so let's jump into uh, other options that we have within this blob you can also configure this blob with a static domain name so for that all you have to do is just go to your custom domain and give your domain name and you have to configure your godaddy or namecheap or whatever the dns provider in case if you are using as your dns you just have to create a c name with your storage account name this is my storage account name and also blob.co.windows.net this has to be pointed with my domain name so once i have done that i can simply enter here that domain name so my storage account is able to browse for publicly with my domain name and if at all i want to configure a static website uh, in fact not the type of your storage account is a blob uh, you should use the normal uh, storage account uh, then you can actually configure a static website you see here you have a static website option so just click on that and make sure that the type of the storage account is not the blob uh, which is not applicable so if you have the normal storage account and then you can click on static website and click on enable and give your index to the front page let's say most of the time index.html example and uh, your error documents path whatever it is uh, like you know the page if it is not opening this is a file it's going to open you can give so once you have given this when you save it what would happen is the magically it's going to create a dollar web folder uh, or container i would say uh, so if i just go back to uh, this specific uh, containers uh, within this container there should be a 
dollar web and uh, within that it's actually created this page so if I try to browse this website I should be able to have uh, content within that uh, dollar web and I should be able to browse uh, my static website when it says static it should not have any uh, any connection for your backend as a SQL and all those so it's just the normal uh, website it runs based on the static HTML pages so if I just go to my container uh, let me show you here dollar web should be available here yeah you see here this is a private and here I can upload the files for this demo purpose I can create a sample index.html file and that can be uploaded here so that the website should actually uh, available here it's index.html and I click on upload so it's gonna upload this file so the file is already available so I should be able to browse now this web page by refreshing if I just refresh it's coming actually the test page whatever it was defined and all I have to do is I can simply go ahead and configure the static website with a custom domain name so that uh, it can actually work for my domain also that's how it's gonna work that concludes about the blob storage and uh, blob storage has a lot of other advantages when compared with any other uh, features like since it is object oriented uh, you can go for a different type of content can be stored and that can be automatically identified and uh, you can extend up to petabytes and you will be getting a greater output uh, in terms of the gigabytes of the data also can be uh, retrieved uh, directly from the storage account and uh, you can also configure an animals and specific to data how it can be viewed and you can segregate with the content uh, con based with the help of containers that way it actually shows shows us as a folder structure but that's not a true folders and that really helps us in terms of organizing the things and you can go for the access management and static website all and also the types of the data hot cool and archive so these all are the benefits that you will be getting with the storage account with respect to the blob type of storage account so i hope this is useful for you thank you for watching this